Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This time we're taking a look at 3D titles. Now, this feature is actually something I haven't actually covered since it came out a year or two ago, but it's a really powerful feature to create really good looking 3D titles inside of Final Cut really efficiently as well. And I think what I can do is I can give you guys an overview of uh, some of the cool ways you can manipulate the titles and, and create a look that you may want to go for. Uh, but really the most useful thing you can do with this feature is just, just have a go and explore the different features because there's so many settings and options, but I'll be able to take you through a few of those today. So, what I've created here is a nice little title with a bit of background and also some foreground as well that's just simulating a film title from, say, a trailer. Um, and what I want to get you guys doing is thinking about the way that we're going to light and create the title to create the desired effect. So it's not just about how the features work, it's about what the impact's meant to be as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if we go into the text panel over here on the right hand side, you can see we've now got two options. We've got 3D titles and 3D cinematic titles. Now the cinematic titles have backgrounds, etc. built in. Essentially the tools are the same from the titles perspective, but you've also got um, atmospheres and environments. But we're just going to try and create everything from scratch using the built-in tools. Now you can just create a normal text. If we just click on all here, we can just grab a, th a basic title. Um, and then in the inspector up here, if you can't see that, just click this button over here to the right. Then if you just turn on 3D text, then you have actually created a 3D title. Now it may not look very 3D, that's because it's not very big. So we scale this up. Now if we click on the title in the viewer, then it's got given us a few new controls that we wouldn't normally have with a non-3D title. We can move the title, we can move it left, right, up, down, and also, away and towards camera. But we've also got these rotation options here. So you see as we hover over each of these circles, it gives us different ways that we can rotate the title as well. So if we hold down shift, we can snap it to key rotation points. Just like that. And if we don't hold down shift, then it gives us complete freedom to rotate the title as we wish. And you see, very simply, we've created a 3D title. Now, it doesn't move much. If we were to play this now, nothing happens. So we want to use some movement from a different 3D title, from one of these preset 3D titles, and manipulate them to create exactly what we're looking for. And that is a title with some basic movement, but no actual build-in. So you see a lot of these, they do these kind of exciting entrances and exits. We want the movement, but we don't want the complete entrance. Even though there are some cool ones, I think this tumble one's really cool. The reason being is that all these titles kind of pause during their uh, their movement. You can see if we just scrub through here, it pauses here and then it fades out in the same kind of uh, motion. So we've got a basic 3D title. It builds in, it pauses, and then it builds out. The first thing we want to do is focus on the actual look of the text. So let's select our text. And you see we've got a few tabs up here. We've got video, info, text, and title. If we click on title, this is going to give us options over the build-in. Um, so we can actually choose how long it takes to build in, or how quickly it builds in as well. So I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm going to turn off build out because I only want it to build in, and you'll see why this is sort of important in a little while. The animation style zoom is perfect. I just want a little bit of movement, but I don't want a complete building. Now we're going to click on text and create the actual text in the way we want it to look. So let's say we want to create um, a scary film title. So I'm just going to type scary film. One of the most important things is that we find a, uh, a font that's actually got some kind of gothic undertones to it. Now you can spend ages looking for a particularly scary title or a scary font rather. I'm just going to try and find one rather quickly. So we've got this quite clearly uh, horrific title here. 
And with 3D text, you can see the 3D text pane is automatically enabled. This blue button here indicates that it is 3D. We can toggle it off and then we have a 2D text. Now, when 3D text is enabled, we then have loads more options down the right hand side as well. By default, this window here is minimized. You can see we've got a show button next to lighting. And it's really important we toggle that on because the way a title is lit is going to indicate to the audience what kind of movie it is. Now, when you want to create, make a character look scary, you underlight them. So you shine a light from below looking up at their face to create these really scary shadows. And that's what we want to do with the title. So where it says lighting star, we can click that and we can choose below. Backlit would also be effective, but below is a bit more standard for, for horror. Okay. Now, we also want to turn on self-shadow, which means the actual text itself will cast shadows onto itself. Okay. Now, it looks like we're not doing very much at the moment, and that's actually just because we haven't really assigned a proper texture yet. So, the lights are shining up at the title, but the light isn't really sure how to react with the text because... The, the text doesn't have any detail about what material it is. So further down here, you can see we've got material options. Now, there is an option to have multiple materials, and that's going to allow you to assign different materials to the different corners and edges and face of the text. Uh, but maybe we'll get into that in another tutorial. For now, we'll just stick with a single texture for the text. So if we click on this arrow here, it's going to give us a library of different options to choose from. I'm going to choose something metallic -y. so we can go on metal and there's lots of great options here I'm going to go for old steel just because it's going to have quite a shiny nice look to it now when we add this texture you can see it's given us a few options we've got a finish distress uh, and substance now the substance I wouldn't worry about too much but we want to focus on the the finish of it so we want it to have quite a uh, quite a polished finish so we get some nice shiny edges and then on the distress we can add some scratches to really make it slightly horrific and you can see now it's starting to become clear that there's a lot more light coming from underneath than from anywhere else which is which is absolutely perfect now you can add glow and drop shadow just like on normal text but unless you're building an environment that kind of thing isn't particularly necessary now, one thing with the self shadow so if, if we just go up to the lighting panel at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hide the materials pane just so it's a bit clear what I'm doing. I'm just looking at this lighting panel here. We just want to increase the softness of the self shadows because because this text has got jaggedy edges. If the light's shining up, let's say it's hitting this uh, edge here, then we might end up with shadows up here because the light can't get all the way up because this bit's in the way. So it will create create a shadow from here onto here. We just want to make sure that's soft, otherwise uh, you'll get some really jaggedy edges which won't render well. It's not about whether that's what you want, it's about the fact that if you don't have some softness then it won't look very authentic and realistic. Now we can bring down the light intensity as well. We don't want it to be too, too bright. And if we reopen the 3D text option, then we can add some more depth to the text as well, so that the title is a lot thicker. Just like that. Now the weight's going to essentially make it a bit bolder, right? So you can see if we bump this all the way up, then we're going to end up with something that's illegible. So you can increase a little bit of the weight, but if you start getting overlapping text, then you want to use some of the basic text tools. If we just toggle this advanced button down here, we can turn up the tracking, which is just going to separate out the text for us a little bit. Fantastic. Now the other thing, just to create uh, a slightly more imposing feel from the titles, if we click on this title in our viewer, we want to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to rotate it up on the x-axis and then also on the y-axis as well. And you can see now that we're looking up at it, the title is above us. So the title's got this menacing and empowered look to it. So now that we've got a title with a kind of texture and look that we want to go for, 
uh, it's we now want to try and get that movement that we're after. Now, how do we get or extract a little bit of the movement without having this complete build up that I don't think is going to be very uh, effective? Well, we can use another feature from Final Cut called Compound Clips. So if we right click and press New Compound Clip, this is going to essentially bake this title into its own timeline. So I can now call this Scary Film Title. And now this will be a piece of media that we can grab from our event. And now it's just going to be its own piece of footage. So now we can find the in and out points of the movement we want. Let's say from here. So I'm going to hold down the option key and press the square close bracket just to trim to the playhead. And if I play, I want it to build to like there. So we, it's literally just this tiny bit of movement. So now our title goes from here to there. Now we can use the retime tool. So we click this button over here. We can slow this down to 10% of its original speed. So now it's playing at 4% because I just dragged out the handle. And now we've got this slight movement just to add a little bit of movement so it feels fairly cinematic. Now, if you want to go back in and change the title, you might think, oh man, um, I actually want to change the lighting, it's a bit too intense, then we can just double click on this compound clip and then we can select the title and we're going to get our settings back that we can control up here. Now one thing I do want to change is just the way that the edges are dealing with themselves. So, if we click on the 3D text, you can see we've got a front edge option. By default it's beveled, if we turn it back to square you can see it's just going to be literally like two, uh, like a, I want to call it like a sandwich, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's essentially just exactly the same thickness the whole way through. Whereas if we go for something like groove, it's going to create these little grooves around the edges of the text here, which is really nice. We can increase the front edge size as well. I think that's really cool. So we've got this nice kind of like outline to the text. Fantastic. Okay, so we can click on this back arrow here to take us back to our main timeline. And now it's about building an environment for this title. So we can use some of the built-in generators. So we've got a few things like glimmer and grunge as well. We want to really combine these. So I'm going to grab Grunge and I'm going to drag it underneath our title. And then if we press Command 6, we're going to bring up our color correction controls and we can just drop the exposure massively. I'm going to drop the highlights as well just so everything stays a little bit more balanced. And drop the masters a bit. There we go. So we've got a little bit of texture in the background. And then we can use the glimmer to generate some particles which can go over our footage. So if we drag this on top, and we're just going to trim it to the length of the title. And now we can play around with this by changing the color. And drop the opacity a little bit again and we want these particles to be like a reddish color however we can have a bit more control of that when we change the filter in a moment so if we press the back arrow here to take us out of the color corrector and make sure we clicked on the generator tab at the top here we can change the amount of particles the speed of them I want to slow that right down so it doesn't distract the scale we can bring down as well lifespan and saturation we'll kind of leave the saturation around where it is now we can change the hue which is going to change the color of the particles to be something a bit more red which i think is going to be fairly menacing and we can turn off show background and that's going to put our particles over the top like that 
Oh no, yeah, we've got particles that are over the top of the film. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've been watching this for however many minutes and this looks absolutely terrible. And that's where it's important that we now look at the shot as a whole. So, I'm going to use a plugin called Total Adjustment. Now, this, I believe, is available in the Mac App Store. It essentially works as an adjustment layer if any of you are used to Adobe After Effects. So it's going to allow us to control the whole uh, color and effects and apply effects to the whole shot. Now I'm going to press Command 6 again to bring up the color corrector. And by by the way, when you go to the color corrector, if you, the moment you start manipulating the colors, you're going to add a color correction filter to this file. And as I said before, this is going to affect everything below it. Really bring down the saturation. And I also think that the text is a bit bright as well, so we can change the exposure on that. So I've just selected the scary film title and because our color correction window is still open, I can now change the color on the text. Excellent. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Now, last few things I want to do. I'm going to add a couple more adjustment layers. Or just one more, to be truth be told. I'm going to bring down the saturation massively on the first one. And then I'm going to tint the scene overall in the second one. A bit more of a colder feel. We can bring back a little bit of the warmth, but mainly the coldness. And the saturation, we can bump this up a little bit, but not too much. And the other thing is, I do think that the particles are now a little bit distracting just with the scale of them. So we can select the clip and we can actually just scale it up. And then the grunge as well, we can also bring down the exposure of that a bit more. Just so you just have the faintest sign of an environment. Now if we play this back, it will look a little bit fuzzy. And that's just because, you can see we've got a few jaggedy lines, that's just because Final Cut is rendering it in real time so it's creating a preview render essentially now when you pause it so I just press play to pause it this is a far more accurate representation of what the final text is going to look like but if you really want to know exactly what it's going to look like render out your project export it export it just as a as a movie file it doesn't matter what resolution you go for because it's going to be reflective of how the text is going to look all your render settings are just going to control the output resolution and stuff like that as opposed to how high quality the 3D text is. The 3D text has a pretty standard um, look to it. Now, there we go. That was our 3D text that we've created. We've uh, bearing in mind the environment and the way that we want the text to look and feel to the audience. And we've combined quite a few effects and filters from Final Cut, including this total adjustment layer to create an overall look and we've done that to create something that feels a lot more cinematic and like a film title and just the basic movement to it as well is just gonna really uh, sell the effect a bit more as well. So hopefully this was useful. I think I'm gonna do a few more tutorials on 3D text in the near future just because there's so much to it. If there's any particular aspect of 3D text you guys wanna know about, then just drop a comment down below and I shall look into that and try and give you a bit more information about it. But happy to be back and I'll see you guys soon in a brand new tutorial.